How's it going guys? Welcome in today's video. So today I wanted to talk about the Grapple Smarty 2.0 and give you guys a few side mount or side control drills that you guys can do from here. The way I'm gonna use this dummy for you guys today is I'm gonna teach this like I was teaching an instructional, like I'd be teaching to a group class because honestly, every time that I play with this thing, it feels like I'm able to use it like a real training partner. Now, obviously there will be some things that a real training partner is gonna still be better for because they can give you actual reactions, but I'll give you guys some ideas of how you can actually train what I call the next layer of a technique or a move. Let's start with the first position. So from this side control position, the first thing that we wanna look at is something known as a neon belly. So if I'm here in a hip to hip side control or I'm here on my knees, I can pop up to the neon belly, right? Here's the good thing. When I'm in this neon belly position, that this person doesn't complain, doesn't whine, and I can stay here for as long as I want. I can stay in this position. Whenever we're doing this pop-up position, right, the essential detail is making sure that everything happens all in one. So I'm using my hands on the ground, and I'm gonna pop up, and my back leg is gonna shoot in and go across the hip. So as I almost do this push-up, I get onto both of my tippy toes, and I pop up, and shoot my knee across, and now we're into this position. The standard way that you could control the knee on belly, because I don't have a gi to hang on to, is the back of the neck, like a collar tie, and then the far side leg and lift. There is something referred to known as what's called a spearing knee on belly, where you actually drive more of your kneecap into the sternum, and you can lift up and compress. Now, personally, I don't do this to my training partners because I value my training partners, and it feels very terrible, and you know, it could, it can really, depending on how big you are, how much force you put and how small they are, you could definitely crack a rib or bruise the sternum significantly. And so I would just feel terrible if someone had to do like leave training time for a move that wasn't necessary. There are plenty of other submissions that you guys can pick from in order to get tap compliance. But if you get one of these dummies, man, you guys can sit here all day and squeeze it and be as uh, manly or hulking as you guys want with that. So you don't have to beat up your little training partners like guys like me. Here into this position, and the way I would return myself down is I would take my hand and I would put it underneath the arm, put my other hand onto the ground or on the shoulder, and then I would shoot my legs back out and now we're back into a hip to hip. As we're here, I put my hands on the ground I'll rotate this way. If you guys watch my toes right here and watch my south leg, which means the one closest to his leg, as it goes to pop up, look, it shoots right across the hip right here. And then notice that my toes aren't on the ground and my foot's out here for a post. A common mistake I see students do with this is they'll put the knee on the mat. And there is a time and place to have your chin across the belly and the knee on the mat. It's just when we're doing this drill, it's not a good habit to get into. You, you, can, you can be pushed over here. The other common mistake I see students do is that this leg, they'll, they'll sit their hip down a lot of times right here. And so the problem with that is obviously if you get pushed and rolled over, then you fall off. So you wanna try to stay on your shin. You wanna try to stay elevated from here because you can punch them and they won't really be able to punch you. You could control them from here. The next layer to this move that I like to show is that whenever we pop up, right, we could switch sides. So this is what I call the, the neon belly switch. I can place my hands on the ground and I can change to the other side right here. Then from here, I could lower myself back down and now I have this side to side neon belly. So you could practice on this side too. It's the same mechanics as we did on the other side. I pop up and we go here. Now let's talk about the transfer. The essential detail for the transfer is that I always have at least one leg connected. Right, so whenever I put my hands on the ground or I put my hands on the shoulders, it, there's different reasons why you do one versus the other, but I have to shift my weight over their head. If I keep my weight back this way, I won't be able to hand my leg off, but I put my weight on the shoulders and look, as I switch, I always have my leg connected. So right now my legs are still connected and balanced on top. And then it replaces and it hands off to post. If I just jump my leg off and I jump and switch, there'll be a moment of disconnect. And that's where having a good training partner is valuable because the training partner can say, hey, I felt like you had no weight on me there. Yeah, there was weight on the shoulders, but the hips felt very light. That's because there was a disconnect there. So when I put the hands on the shoulders, I wanna to try to hand those off and post the foot off. And now I have my knee on belly switch. That is another drill we could do. So you could go from side to side. We could go here, right? I could pop up, I could put my hands on the ground 
or I could put my hand on the shoulder, hand on the hip, pop myself up like a surfboard, and now I'm here, I'm able to ride the wave, stay in this position, control if I wanted to switch, hands, hand them off and switch, and now we're here, right, ride, control, pop myself down, boom, push up, switch, boom, and go down. So knee on belly position is a very good one with the switch. Now, the next one that I really like to do on this dummy is actually something referred to as reverse knee on belly, or um, some people will call it, uh, what is it called, cross, uh, not re reverse ashi, reverse cross ashi. What that means is that whenever I pop up, instead of my south leg going across the hip, it's gonna be my north leg. So if I was in the standard side control position, the way that I would have to do this is I would have to turn and I would have to shoot my legs over here like I'm in reverse case of Katami and I'll rotate for you guys here in a second to the camera. And then from here, I can pop myself up. So I'm in this reverse knee on belly. So it's the same thing, except my north knee is here. A lot of times I use this out of the guard pass. If I throw like the legs out the way, sometimes it's far with my uh, south leg to get here, but I can use my north leg and post my knee down. Now from here, a good little drill to practice on this dummy is the back step. So you could go here and then reverse back step around. And now as you guys can see, I kind of landed in a little triangle position. Sometimes this happens actually in real life when I'm training too, or their arm is inside here and I wind up in an S mount position, but I could just recover back to the side control position right here as well. Whenever we're doing this drill, I'll rotate the dummy this way. If I'm trying to do the reverse side control, right? Let's say I'm in this hip to hip position. I wanna to try to bring my arms possibly south and I'm in this what I call reverse case katami. Regular case katami would be this leg split, but my legs facing their head. So this is reverse case katami. And now the essential detail is whenever I'm here is I have to put my weight on them again. And this leg, the south leg now, is gonna shoot across the hip. So same, same thing as the other one, you wanna pop yourself up. Now there are some leg locks you could do in this position as well too. If you're a leg lock person, you could be here and actually pop up and swing your leg over, boom. And now you can start attacking some leg locks as well um, into this position. So I do this sometimes when I'm training as well. I think, I think this is commonly referred to as the reverse cross ashi or, or reverse ashi, I guess. So single leg right here. Today, we're gonna be focused on the, the knee on belly spin. So I'm here. Now from this position, the essential detail is that you have to sit on them. Unlike the other one where we didn't wanna sit in the regular knee on belly, this one we wanna sit. So I wanna shoot my hip down and then I'm gonna lean my weight and back heel and kick my leg. Boom, all the way over. And now we're into this position right here. Like I said, sometimes I wind up in this position or their arm is isolated. Now, how do I get out of here? Well, I think the easiest way is actually for me to lean toward the camera and take my back leg and tuck my heel to the hip. And then that's gonna make it easier for me to lean back this direction to curl my other leg over around just into the regular mounted position from here. So you could practice this either from the uh, mounted position, right? You could practice it from there. I'm sorry, you could practice it from the side mount position where you're here and you pop up or you could practice it off of a guard pass. Either one is cool. So that's a reverse uh, knee on belly to a back step and it's a way to kind of take the mount position. So let me know down in the comments below, is there a position that you would like more information on that could show you some different drills with this dummy or also share some useful drills that you possibly use your dummy for. That way it can maybe help out somebody else. Those are some two very, very basic drills that I like to teach on this guy because you guys can put all your weight on them. Those are usually terrible moves to train against your training partners. Now, how can we make this more of a, of a follow-up move? One is obviously the neon belly, a very common reaction from a regular neon belly is whenever we go here, maybe this person starts to take their hand and starts to push the knee. So this is where training the next level is very cool. What I mean by that is don't just go for the arm lock with the person's arm right here. So I want you guys to talk yourself through the actual mechanics of why you'd be doing this. So that would be their hand goes to the knee because they're trying to push your leg off. So now you take your hand and you pummel underneath their arm and then now you're gonna stand up and pull them on their side, boom. And now your foot's gonna go to the armpit and then you're gonna step your foot all the way down here to the lower back into this position. 
If they had gi pants, you could hold the gi pants. For no gi, you could cup. And then from here, now you're sitting and you have the nice arm lock position right here. When I'm here in the knee on belly, they go to push the knee. I scoop the arm and we stand up and I pull them on their side. Now my south foot goes into the armpit and then my north leg is gonna step all the way around to the lower back. The most common mistake that I see students do right here is they don't step enough. So if you step too shallow, what's gonna happen is you may not be able to reach the leg or when you sit, you're gonna sit way too far off and they're gonna be able to hitchhiker out or start to escape. What you're wanting to do is you wanna make sure that you step by the lower back enough and hold in this position. Um, finishing from here can be tough. A lot of times people put their hands together. So from here, I just usually rock, throw my leg back over, and now I'm into the standard arm lock finish from here. Then you guys could start to go to work in this position. Well, some of the benefits of using the dummy is that you can actually make them do certain scenarios to you over and over. So don't just train like the basic positions or just the basic movements. That's very good too. If you're like an upper belt or you've kind of gotten your wear and tear out of that and you're like, man, I, don't, I, I wanna make it a little bit more advanced, that's how you would do it. And that's one of the biggest benefits to having the arms and the legs is that you could kind of position them in places that you want that you're able to do. So another way is like if someone takes an underhook underneath of you here in side control. You could be in side control since we were talking about that day. They have an underhook. So how would you counter this underhook? Well, there's a bunch of ways, right? I could backstroke, check the hip over here. I could underhook the leg. I could re-pummel my arm through into this position. If they underhook here, right? I could shoot almost up into a case of Katami. Headlock position here, nice little soul stealer. Shout out to Henry Aikens there. Shove the arm in between, strike, hit choke, do whatever you want, right? But it just gets you used to where you can put your weight and how you can actually train this. So these are a couple of moves that you guys can really do in order to build your connection. And then the last thing is try to connect them as much together as possible. I think that's a big thing that students start lacking, especially once they get done with learning the fundamentals, um, which you're never really done, but once you've kind of been introduced to them and you're starting to develop them, then start to connect them together. So how could you go from, you know, regular side control or regular holding into reversing the on belly into the arm lock um, position? So make it all flow and connect together. And so I'll leave that up to you guys to try to figure out because that's part of the journey. Explore, figure it out yourself because whenever you guys make those discoveries, um, it means a lot more and it resonates with you a lot more. That's a big reason why this dummy is very valuable is it allows you to like experiment on someone who's not gonna complain, you can do as much experimentation as you want and you could possibly make new connections or even if it's like a question that you end up finding out like, oh man, well, I wonder if I put the arm here, or if, then you might be able to ask your coach like, hey, is this an actual thing that someone could do? Would they be able to do this to me? And then they can kind of troubleshoot with you. So having the dummy is just, I think a great tool because it allows for so much different options depending on where you're at in your jiu-jitsu journey. But um, I also will just sit here and just kind of play with it in general and it gives me time to look at it and kind of zoom out and kind of see what's going on and try to envision stuff. Being able to see certain things and think about it has a very powerful effect on how you guys progress and how you tend to learn some stuff. So there's two, there's a couple different sizes that the Grapple Smarty comes in. Um, I ordered the pre-stuffed one, so this is the pre-stuffed one. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but if you guys have never had to stuff a dummy before, it's kind of a pain. If you wanna spend uh, less time stuffing it and more time using it, then just spend the extra money, save up. I have a discount code down in the bottom. I think it's Chasin5. Um, you guys can use that, and that gets you a little bit of a discount on this guy. And uh, with that being said, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.